The Athol Estates stretch far across Highland Perthshire, their timeless beauty shining bright. This ancient landscape is being safeguarded for the future. Here, nature is given the opportunity to revive and thrive. It's just about trying to maybe shift that balance a bit now so that these woodlands are not lost entirely. And where tradition still plays its part. There's huge, vast places in Scotland you can't get a machine to. Yes, no, 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 so. of course. So you've got to have, right, it's like the good old days. When I married into the British aristocracy, it was the start of a wonderfully exciting journey. But it was also a little daunting. I became a Viscountess, and for an American girl from a small town outside Chicago, that was quite a shock. I live with my husband Luke, heir to the Earl of Sandwich, and our family at Mapperton House in Dorset. Living in a place like this is a joy, but also a challenge. And every day we're aware that we're preserving a very special part of Britain's heritage. Mapperton has opened up an extraordinary new world for me, and I can't wait to share it with you all. So if you love castles and manors and stately homes as much as I do, please join this American Viscountess as I journey into the British countryside in search of some of Britain's finest historic houses. Blair Castle is encircled by beautifully tended gardens and mature trees. But beyond, the drama of the Highlands beckon. Where better to catch a glimpse of the scale of the Athol Estates than high up on the roof of the castle? Um, oh my goodness! It's the <gasps> oldest part of the castle, I think dating back to 13th century. And then you've got Cairngorm National Park, kind right. of all, all that way and then the more managed landscape immediately oh. around the castle, which you can Wow, see okay, of. oldest part of the castle here. And how long a period did it take to build the castle that we see today? It's never one period, it's an evolved design. And it's a design that started from the period of the Crusades, with an essentially a land grab, Right. and then you got Cummins Tower, which we're on now, it's kind of 13th century, and expanded a lot into sort of medieval halls in the 15th and 16th century. And then with the Victorian era and this craze across Scotland of kind of baronial yes. castellations is, the, is really the look of the castle, the right. exterior look of the castle today. So the outside is a complete, is a mishmash yeah, yeah, yeah. of 750 years. I mean, how wonderful. Hi everybody, you've likely observed my seemingly endless energy hopping from one project to the next, to the next, to the next. However, like everyone else, there are moments when life's pressures become overwhelming and the need for someone to talk to does arise. And especially in today's world brimming with challenges, prioritizing mental health is paramount, particularly in these uncertain times. Mental well-being warrants the same consideration as physical health, yet it frequently goes unnoticed. And personally, I've experienced the impact of daily life, work, relationships, and societal expectations on my mental health. Similar to our dedication to maintaining physical health through exercise, it's equally crucial to exercise our mental well-being. And therefore, I am delighted to introduce our paid partnership with BetterHelp. BetterHelp is on a mission to enhance the affordability and accessibility of therapy. Their online platform streamlines the process of finding a therapist. Simply answer a few questions and within 48 hours in most cases, you'll be connected with a credentialed therapist. To get started, click the link in my description, betterhelp.com forward slash American Viscountess. This not only supports our channel, but also provides you with a 10% discount on your first month of BetterHelp. It's an opportunity to connect with a therapist and then evaluate its impact on your well-being. 
Various therapy options are available, whether through a phone call, a video chat, or even messaging. Choose what makes you most comfortable, and you can schedule sessions at a time convenient for you. Just as we invest hours in the gym for our physical health, let's give our minds the same attention. More than 4 million people have opted for better health to embark on healthier, happier lives. And if you think therapy could benefit you, consider BetterHelp. Click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com forward slash American Viscountess. As I prioritize my physical health, I'm equally dedicated to maintaining my mental health throughout my life. Recognizing the importance of both facets is crucial to a healthy life. Once again, thank you to BetterHelp for supporting this channel. Take care. And always remember, seeking support is a sign of strength. You know, I'm looking out on this incredible landscape, but I think times are evolving as well with what we're seeing out in the landscape and what sort of the, our forebears did with it. We're having to rethink. And is that what you're doing as well? Are you looking at this thinking, right, I am managing thousands of acres. What am I going to do with it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the, the conception of what is a wild landscape is changing. And, you know, you're doing rewilding at Mapperton and we're taking a similar approach, but for this landscape, I guess. Right, yes. In terms of afforestation. So we're creating a lot of native woodlands yes. on quite a large scale. We're probably hoping to plant two million trees in the next three years and then try and do some more of that and also up here a lot of these hills are, are, are peatland yep. where you can't grow trees and they would have been drained either in the Victorian era or even under the 1960s government schemes so we're doing a lot of peatland restoration okay which essentially means re-wetting peatland yes um, but both of those things the afforestation or the peatland restoration create a lot of increase in biodiversity which is a very nice thing so you hopefully will see a lot more birds, a wildlife, more, yeah. flora and fauna, and generally kind of healthier thing, as yes. well as being carbon storage sinks. Yes, exactly. And then with the farming, we're very taken with the regenerative farming principles, mm. which is essentially the more, the healthier you can make your soils, yes. the better farming you can do. And by better farming, we really mean by having zero inputs. So we're not trying to put any chemicals on the ground or medicines in the animal. And you, you know, that's not something where you can draw a line and it happens overnight. Right. But there's been a big, I say, cultural change. And we're really excited about it. Because yes. I think it's, I think it's the right thing to do, but it also feels that you're connecting farming with nature yes. rather than just exploiting soil. That's exactly right. And I think it's the same at Mapperton. It's about finding the right balance. So, and it's looking at ways, you know, that we can rewild at Mapperton um, in particular, those farms that are marginal farmland, but at the same time, keeping farms in hand that, again, are for food production, but also going down that model of regenerative farming and looking in particular at the health of the soil and how important totally. that is. And it's all about knowing what's right for that bit of land. I think with all these historic houses, there's always a big connection between the land that is around the men, the house, and both in the managed sense, yes. often like the part immediate policy grounds or parkland, but then particularly in Scotland, in the Highlands, as you get out into the mountains, having a story that relates the house to the land, yeah. I think is very important. Yeah, absolutely. Well said, I couldn't have said it better myself. I also just want to note, I love, love the Scottish flag there. <laughs> <laughs> The Athol Estates have a long tradition of woodlands management, as well as commercial forestry. I met up with Georgie Pelly, native woodland consultant, to hear more about how the ancient woodland here is being revived. So Georgie, you've been here working with Athol Estates for some time now, is that right? Yeah, the last three, four years or so we've been engaged with the estates. And what's your role? In, in this, this beautiful landscape here. Yeah, so we came in to, to help the estate sort of take, um, shift their, their woodland management into a different phase. Um, so 
at Athol, they have this really extraordinary history of, of forest management in Scotland where they've, they've really contributed to the development of, of forestry. Really since the 17th century, they were a place known, renowned for their forestry. And that's sort of going right back to some kind of quirky characters where um, one of the dukes was so intent on expanding the forest that he, um, he would spray seed across hillsides with cannons. Um, so, so, so he would literally shoot a cannon out <laughs> that was filled That's with seed. That's the story. <laughs> <laughs> that is the story. Oh um, yeah, so just finding these really innovative ways of, of expanding the forest at Athol. Right. So, it, you know, there's thousands of hectares now that are established, really quite diverse commercial woods at Athol. And um, a few hundred years ago, they were bare hills. Okay. So they have this real tradition of transforming the landscape here, of, of really taking and changing the landscape through forestry, through new woodlands. And in the past, that's been with this focus on commercial species of, of growing timber. Right. Now it's a slightly different shift. And yeah. It's going more towards this ecological restoration. Right. So yeah, it's been a real change. So it's how fascinating. And it's almost, I mean, if I don't mind, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think there is this real shift across the country in going back to this nature recovery, right? Absolutely. And farming same way, right? Absolutely. So nature recovery, regenerative farming. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, we're seeing that real shift across Scotland. Here at Athol, they're making that move. It's not to say they're moving entirely away from commercial yeah. forestry, it's still part of the picture. But, but trying to find the balance. Absolutely, yeah. So that's why we, you know, we're working in areas like this where we have these sort of remnants of, of native woodlands. Yes. Um, with these sort of key species. Where that, they're dotted around. Mm -hmm. And you can see where, where trees have been lost and you have that retreating canopy cover. Um, so the footprint of the forest has been, has been shrinking over the years just through different land uses. And so this is about bringing that shift where we start to regenerate that land to allow these woodlands to regenerate and create more expansive areas of, of woodland habitat that link up and bring all these different benefits that we, that we know right. we do. Right, exactly. Biodiversity, Absolutely. all of that. So when, when, you're, when I'm looking to my left here and you can see these sort of native, uh, these are native, right? These are native trees. You think, gosh, what can I do with this? Is that right? Absolutely, yeah. So there's evidence of the way the land's been used, you know, for lots of different reasons, but um, it's been grazed by sheep and right. by deer. Yes, and that's yes. part of the picture here, but um, it's just about trying to maybe shift that balance a bit now so that these woodlands are not lost entirely. I mean, what we see up this glen, up Glen Tilt, um, these remnants, I mean, they're probably the remnants of the first forest to come in post-glacial times, you know? Right. So, the genetic continuity of, of maintaining the trees that we have now and avoiding losing them. Yes. You know, there's sort of that key genetic yes. material yes, that yes, yes, if we lose course. it, it's gone. It's and, gone. And that's that whole, you know, <gasps> sort of journey through from the glacial time. Yes. So, um, Incredible. And it's about trying to, to, to preserve that. Absolutely, yeah. And when I also look to my right, though, I can see sort of dotted around sort of bundles of logs. Mm. Is that you as well? Yeah, this is part of a big piece of the picture that we're, um, that we're trying to shift in this blend. So this is um, the start of a, a really large scheme, um, a new planting scheme, a native woodland scheme. Right. So that's the first evidence of the fence line coming in, and that will be a deer fence. So we'll be excluding deer from quite a significant area. Yes. For the first sort of 20, 30 years, really, to allow those trees to establish fully in that time. Wonderful. And I mean, for a scheme like this, it's, um, we're talking about sort of 500 hectares or so in size. Yes. And sort of 400, 500,000 trees. Yes, that's um, incredible. Yeah. Because as much as we love deer, they can be quite damaging to, again, new life. Absolutely, that's it. They do then actually browse on these, these seedlings that are coming through and they just, um, if where that happens repeatedly, those trees just won't quite. Right. Make won't it. quite grow exactly yeah. they won't make it and um, so it's just allowing it's just especially somewhere where we're establishing a lot of new seedlings it's not just relying on the natural regeneration there's it, you know areas where we don't have that seed source so we come in we plant seedlings and we have to protect them and you have to protect them right so you're you're really helping and aiding in this 
recovery of nature. Absolutely, that's what it's about, yeah. Yeah, yeah really trying to, to kickstart those natural processes again, bring the trees back into the landscape in these areas. And then all the benefits that they're associated with. Like, yeah, as you said, the biodiversity, really focusing in on the soils and how and they the develop. Soil, yeah. The water moving through yes, the landscape. Exactly. I mean, I think it's really interesting here at Athol. You know, it is looking for a balance. Genuinely, it's not a it's not a full shift yes. from you know from from the traditional land use to to just full rewilding. It's it's somewhere where they're trying to find a balance between different land uses. You know, still have the farming, still have your stocking but have your woodlands and right. expand them as well within that wider picture. Yeah, Absolutely. well, thank you, Georgie. This is brilliant. Um, well, gosh, if I could come back here in about, <laughs> what, 20 to 30 yeah, years? Yeah, you see, and a, I might <laughs> see a significant change. difference. Exactly. Yeah. exactly, absolutely. It is absolutely all about balance, protecting new plant life and controlling the deer population who majestically roam these hills. Highland ponies have long worked and been bred on the Athol Estates, their bloodline dating as far back as the 1860s. Both Queen Victoria and Queen Elizabeth II were passionate about these beautiful but hardy ponies. I joined Gilly Campbell String out on the hills to hear how these plucky ponies are upholding Highland traditions. Okay, Campbell, so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. And who do we have here? This is Huey and this is Lovett. Huey and Lovett, wow. Okay, so we do they want to be walked? Should we start walking? Yeah, now? let's start walking. Okay. Yeah, this one's a bit of an impatient <laughs> one. He's only young. <laughs> okay, I have never been this up close and personal to a Highland pony before. So this is very exciting for me, but they're, they're lovely creatures, aren't Aye, they? Aye, lovely, gentle creatures. Yeah, oh, so I can happy to- Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay, wow. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about Highland ponies. I mean, they're a real staple here of, in the sort of the Highlands, yes. Aye, they're very traditional in the deer stalking world. It's ah. the, the oldest and most traditional way of taking shot deer off the hill. Okay, and that's, that's what they're doing. Is that what these are for? I, I saw these saddles and I thought, oh my goodness, has, has Campbell put them on? Are we going for a ride? No, <laughs> these are traditional deer saddles. There's not much padding to them as you can probably here. There's, right. They're made of basically really, really hard leather to cope with the, the weight of a weight of a very heavy stag on it. It's, right, of a very heavy stag, right. They can be, they can be upwards of 144, 150 kilos, kilograms. Right. They're very heavy. Oh, is it? Now, he, okay. <laughs> this one, Lovett likes to... Yes. Aye. He's only, yeah. he's only five. He's quite young. He's only young five. Oh my gosh, he's sweet. It. Okay, so when you're you're culling the deer, mm -hmm. putting them on the back of these Highland ponies, yes? Yes. To, and, but the purpose, there is a purpose around culling the deer, isn't there? Yeah, it's just, without, if you have too many deer, you won't have any plant life. Right. Deer will eat it all. You won't have any trees, you'll have none of that. Um, so it's just to keep a natural balance within the, because the deer have no predators. Right, of course, there's so. the, the wolves are gone. Yeah. And, you know, we, we are here in beautiful Scotland. You know, it's just green, it's luscious, and keeping a healthy balance, if you like, of the population is brilliant for regeneration, right? Because that's what the deer is, can damage yeah, landscape, it, can't they? They can damage a lot of, lot of landscapes, but also help a lot as well. Right. With keeping, keeping plants unwanted, uh, non-native invasive species down. They're very good at that. So the right. last thing anyone, anyone wants is no deer there. And this is really the job of the Highland ponies, is that right? Yes, it's essentially, it's taking shot deer off the hill is right. their main, main purpose. In some states in Scotland, you do a bit of grouse shooting. Right. So sometimes they'll go with panniers, which are big wicker baskets that sit on the oh, side yes, of the yes. ponies. And you'll take guests lunch up the hill and take the shot grouse back off the hill okay. with them because there's huge, vast places in Scotland you can't get a machine to. Yes, no, no, so. of course. So you've got to have, right, it's like the good old days. Exactly, right? yes. Yeah, no machinery, um, just good old ponies. But I mean, so sweet. Well, listen, Campbell, thank you so, so much for explaining this to me. And it was so wonderful to meet Huey and love it. And I think that they are very hungry right now because they've both sort of nose down into the ground. They're always hungry. <laughs> they're always hungry. <laughs> they're always eating. <laughs> if they're not walking, they're eating, or they're walking and eating. 
back at the castle, I met up with Andrew Bruce Wooten to understand more about the wider estate and also an ingenious renewable energy project. So tell me a little bit more about the wider estate. Well, the castle is obviously the hub, it's the heart of the estate, and uh, it's what a lot of people think about when they think of Athol, uh, this big white castle off the A9. But it's just uh, the centre of a large spider web of activity, which includes all the traditional enterprises you'd think of, like farming and forestry and deer, and housing with a lot of housing, provision of housing to the to local economy. And now increasingly tourism, so right. lots of people, which is fantastic. A lot of them are just enjoying the wide open spaces, which they're free to do. Yes. And, and then a lot of them stay on the estate and they make it their holiday destination. And then others come and enjoy the castle and either for the day or they might get married here or they might have a business event here. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, we're open to all business. One of the big projects I know that you have going on is sort of looking at different ways to power is that right? To power yeah. different houses on the estate? Is, and tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, so um, in the UK, there was generally a, a big drive to uh, smaller scale renewable energy in the last 20 years. And an opportunity came our way to look at hydro. And the, the estate has a history with hydro because we, we had a hydro scheme in the early part of the last century that but powered the castle before mains electricity arrived here. Right. So, you know, we knew a thing or two about hydro to begin with. So we've developed five schemes on Athol, uh, which we're totaling about three megawatts. So not, not vast, right, but it's right. decentralized green energy, which is going into the grid. And at the castle, it's actually fully powering the castle before it goes into the grid. So it had been here on the castle, what, for a hundred years? before yeah, it went on the mains. Well, funny somewhat. enough, it was developed, uh, as I say, in the early part of the last century, but it, it, it didn't have a huge long life before mains electricity came in. <laughs> right. So right. we could use the pipeline, we can use the intake, we could use right. the powerhouse. All we had to do was buy the tur turbine and the generator. And in fact, the, the turbine and generator manufacturer that produced the original 100 and something years ago, still in existence no. yeah so we've got the same manufacturer more modern modern technology right, right, right. but basically the same turbine <gasps> as was was there 100 years ago so yeah it's grand fantastic come on in okay this is it yeah yeah so Oh my goodness, I can hear it yeah I yeah. can definitely it's behind here is that right it's uh, a labor of love. I clocked the sign out there, 1908. Yeah. So, um, you know, that's when it was first here. Is that right? Yeah, it, it provided power to the castle. The only in, in very early days of electricity, uh, and it provided it power from about 1908 to just after the First World War, Second World War. So really pioneering, right? Completely. Yeah. yeah incredible. Yeah. Anyway, be, and, be prepared. Okay. <laughs> be prepared for the beast. <laughs> oh my goodness! Wow. Fantastic! Tell me just a little bit about this design. Yeah, so it's about 80, produces about 81 kilowatts of power. Right. It's got a high efficiency of about 55%, which is pretty good. Uh, it's got about 10 bar of pressure. So it's taking water off the hill. Instead of a river input, it's, it's taking water off a ditch system on the hill. Right. which makes it incredibly efficient. And it comes down through a 500 millimeter pipe, an old, the, old, the old original pipe, to this point where it gets squeezed into that 300 mil pipe, and then squeezed even more, and then pushed into a turbine through jets. And, it, and that's what rotates the turbine. Right, and that's what we're hearing. And that's what yeah. you're hearing. That's what we're hearing. Absolutely incredible. Uh, thank you, Andrew. What a treat to see this and just to see how Pleasure. we've evolved, or you've yeah. evolved, but and, you've come back. And these, there are schemes like this that are still going 100 years more. Yeah. So, I mean, this, this come back in 100 years, it'll be here. Incredible. That's what we like to see. Thank you, Andrew. An iconic image of the Scottish Highlands are Highland cattle grazing the hills. 
and at Blair Castle, they are part of the bigger picture of regenerative agriculture. Gordon, it's so nice to meet you. And I've, you. I've heard through the Blair Castle grapevine that you've been here for quite some time. Yes. Is that right? How, how long? 39 years. 30, okay, no, no, no. So can we just pause for a second? Because I do have slight fear of cows. I just thought I would mention this. Yeah, they're fine. You'll be okay. fine. Don't okay. worry. <laughs> okay, but those look quite pointy yeah. and sharp. You just keep with me and you'll Okay, be I'm going to keep with you. Oh, my gosh. Okay. In fact, you but could can probably just stroke them. No. So no. can I give them a... Should yeah. I close this gate? Yeah, just come in. Okay. Yeah, yeah, she's fine. The other one's a wee bit more temperamental. Okay. She'll not bother you, but she'll just not come to you. Okay. This okay. one is different. Okay, great. When I look at these Highland cows, look at how sweet they are. This is what I, you know, you expect to see when you come to Scotland, right? Yeah. So more and more now. Stop it. More and more now, and yeah. why is that? Because we use them for different systems now. We can put them out in the hill. Um, the, the whole idea here now is to maybe get another ten. And they put collars on them and then they put them on the hill. You've got to remember in Scotland, these were the main thing many, many years ago. It was all Highland cows. Because they're, they're easy care. They're right. great. They're actually lovely animals. They are lovely, but no one seems to be coming towards my hand. Is that okay? Yeah, she'll come look. Okay. If I take that bucket away. Okay. Yeah, put your hand out. Oh my God. There you go. Oh. She's fine. Here she'll not bother you. Okay. Okay. The two, here. There we go. There you go, there you are. That's better. All right, right, okay. Now they'll come in. This one here, Oop. she's a bit more. Okay, I'm going to stand behind you there, Gordon. There you go. Right, so, so you're here on the estate and yep. you, you look after these lovely animals. Yeah, these and another 150 cows and calves. <laughs> and, and you've been here for 39 years. You yep. must have seen a lot of changes. Yeah, yeah, an awful lot of changes. When I came here, there was 11 people on the farm. Now there's basically two on the farm. So yeah. the farm's changed over yeah. the years. Systems have changed. We, we were in organics, you know, so we were trying to do something different there. Right. But now the future is regenerative Re agriculture. That's so right. Regenerative farming. We're doing something different, yeah. Can I do is, that? Is that yeah, okay? Yeah, of course it is. Okay, yeah. wow. So yeah, changing times. So we've all seen change throughout the world and there'll be a lot more changes to come, I'm sure. Yeah. But I have to say it's really exciting to see these up close and personal. Okay, what was that? Oh, they're just having fun. Okay. You're okay. You're okay. Don't panic. <laughs> Okay. Gordon, can I just add that for the first time in a really long time, I feel more relaxed around cattle than ever before. So you must have your good energy of calmness is, you know, it's affecting me. It's wearing off on me. It's brushing off on me. I'm glad what is to it? hear it. What's your special power? It's just the ability to read cattle, really read their the way they are, the way they react to things, yeah. you know. It's yeah. just, it's an act you pick up over years, you know. It's just the same when they're going to carve, you know when they're going to carve. Yeah. It's just something you learn and when you do learn it, they know you, that you know. Right. It's all right, they're just coming for the bucket. Yeah, You'll that's be fine. okay. Thanks, Gordon. Life's about fun, isn't it? It is about fun and gosh, I've really relaxed now. Now I feel good. See, I'll just <laughs> leave you here. You'll be fine. I'll come back in the morning. You'll still be here. <laughs> The Highland way of life and love of Scotland was embraced by Queen Victoria. And it's here at Blair Castle in the 1840s where it all began. She fell in love with Scotland. Right. The beauty. Of course. The people. Well, people wouldn't... like us. She... <laughs> she it was just wonderful. Absolutely. <laughs> I absolutely love traveling up and down and across the UK to film at some of these most astonishing historic houses but I'm only able to do that because of the support of our patrons. So if you are enjoying this program and these high quality productions, do consider becoming an American Viscountess patron. Here you'll get early access to all of the episodes. They're ad-free as well. Plus, you'll get American Viscountess merchandise, Christmas cards, and a community who also loves stately homes, manors, and castles as much as you do and as much as I do. So do check it out. Details down below.